I have always been drawn to well-made things. Look, I know that sounds pretentious, but hang with me here. Whether it be ink pens, notebooks, briefcases, or cars, I always appreciate really high build quality. Things that are made out of leather, metal, glass, things that are not made to be used and then thrown away. Things that are so well designed and manufactured that they transcend the sum of their parts. As someone who's also into photography, I think it's safe to say that I also love aesthetically pleasing things. Good looking cars, good looking clothes, good looking what? Good looking websites. I've always been a really big fan of good looking web design. It was always this appreciation for both well made things and aesthetically pleasing things that made Laka cameras very interesting to me. Something that I do whenever I get into a new hobby, and honestly, maybe this isn't a healthy or productive thing to do, but I always like to look at the hobby and see what the best thing in that hobby is. So let's say hypothetically, because Lord knows I would never do this. Bass fishing, right? I think it sucks. But let's say that I got into bass fishing. I would want to know what the best rod and reel is. Who makes the nicest bass boat? How can we get the most power out of the bass boat? Right? All those different things. I want to know everything about the hobby and how I can be the best at it or have the nicest thing. That's just kind of who I am. And obviously this translated to when I got into photography. As soon as I discovered what an f-stop was, I wanted to have the lens with the lowest one, right? Like I think that's really cool. We can get more light into the camera, the ability to shoot at lower ISOs, cleaner images, nicer bokehs. We, oh man, we love the bokeh. As soon as I figured that out, I wanted the lens with the lowest f-stop. It was this natural curiosity that led me to the Laka Noctilux, 50 millimeter 0.95 lens. But anyway, when I discovered that lens, it sent my brain all into a tizzy, all metal construction really complicated, fantastic modern optical design. Precisely manufactured, made in Germany, ultra fast lens. But at the time, I was in law school and I was young, dumb, and poor. But that didn't stop me from imagining a world where I could be in the Laka system and at some point hopefully owning this fantastic piece of glass. And look, I know you guys in the comments are gonna be like, oh, he said Laka, he pronounced it wrong. I live in the mountains, I say things the way that I say them, it's fine. Fast forward to now. I'm a little bit older, got a little more a little more gray in my hair, but we're okay with that. But luckily, I'm a little bit less broke. Just a little. Not Mr. Moneybags over here. I'm a public defender. I'm not that kind of lawyer. So not being completely broke and taking my YouTube channel super serious, I thought it was time to probably take a step into the world of Laka cameras. And me being who I am, I overthought it. So I decided that I was going to jump in headfirst into this new expensive camera setup. I was going to have to part with some of the things around the house that I wasn't using anymore. And Lord knows there was a lot of it. Over the past few weeks, I found my way back into my eBay account and started selling things. Started with a razor blade laptop that I was no longer using, moved on to selling some of my other film cameras. Um, rest in peace, my contacts. It's a good camera, but I don't see any use in owning the contacts alongside the Laka. I sold my Nikon FM2, some old video games, and a PlayStation 4. All in all, it totaled about $4,000. And for any of you guys out there who are thinking about jumping into a, a Leica camera system, and maybe it's a little bit out of your price range, uh, maybe you handle it the same way I did. Sell a few of the things that you're no longer using, and that can help finance something that you really want. Plus, it'll give you peace of mind. You won't have so much stuff laying around the house. Now, as for actually buying the Leica camera, it was kind of an adventure. I've been watching these cameras over the past few months. I didn't want to just buy one randomly. Uh, I wanted to be really careful and make sure that I got the exact one that I wanted. And I got hung up on a few minor details. The first one being color. My preference was for the titanium color. It supposedly has really nice wear characteristics. It's a very durable finish. It's not actually a titanium body camera. So that's a misnomer. This isn't like the contacts where there are titanium plates around the outside, no. This is a titanium finish applied to the normal Leica camera body. So you're not getting a really lightweight camera here, but you are getting a camera that may be a little more resistive to wear. So that was appealing to me. So over the past few months, I watched cameras one after the other end. And unfortunately, as I watched them, since about November, the prices have crept up. If you can remember, I put out a poll on this channel and this title was actually one of the titles that I polled folks on for whether they were interested in seeing this video or not. That's how long ago that I was interested in making this video and buying this camera. Um, unfortunately, it took a while. Camera after camera ended and $2,000, $2,200, $2,400, $2,600. Over the past few months, the prices have just continued to tick up. 
Um, I don't know what's going on. Maybe the new Leica M6 announcement, the reissue, has regenerated interest in the old camera bodies. Either way, it seems like the prices are going back up. Being frustrated and not being able to find the camera that I wanted for the price that I wanted, I started looking at some other camera options. The Voigtlander Bessa R4 being one of them, and then also the Zeiss Icon ZM. Both of those are really cool rangefinder bodies as well. Uh, the thing that kept me off the Voigtlander, and I know some people are not gonna agree, and that's fine, I don't think the Voigtlander looks all that good. It's shaped kinda weird. And I know that's a really weird thing to get hung up on. It's probably a great camera, but I just didn't love the way it looked. And getting back to the start of this video and the things that I like and appreciate are good aesthetic design. I don't think the Voigtlander lives up to that. So pretty quickly I ruled that out. Even though those were within the price range, I decided not super interested in the Voigtlander. Turning my attention to the Zeiss Icon ZM though, Really, really like the way this camera looks. Super sexy, comes in a black and a silver finish, and weirdly, I actually prefer the silver. If you can remember, that's not even what I was considering for the Leica. And to make things even better for the Zeiss Icon ZM, it also has an automatic exposure mode, so that camera was really appealing. Unfortunately though, they're still rather expensive. As I looked at those cameras, and some of them were really nice condition, but it seemed like the better the condition got, they got much more expensive, until those cameras were as near as makes no difference $2,000 as well. And that's where I made the decision not to continue looking at these cameras. The Leica was only a little bit more money from the Zeiss Icon and the Voigtland Bessa, and let's be honest, it's the camera I really wanted. Um, I would have definitely got a good camera had I bought either of those cameras. Neither of those cameras were the camera that I had admired ever since I'd been into the hobby of photography. So that's how I finally circled back to the realization that I needed to be ready to spend the money even if it was a little more, and purchase a Leica camera. I think it's the time in the video where we actually get the Leica M6 out, so it still gets me excited when I look at it such an amazing camera. And in, in my mind, these cameras represent the combination of all the things that I'm looking for, right? You've got a gorgeous small camera body, extremely high build quality, all metal construction, and what's not metal is glass. You also have a camera system that is still being worked on today. If something goes wrong with this camera, I can send the camera to a Leica technician and have the camera restored to its factory condition. So the fact that it's so widespread, usage of these cameras is so widespread, you are gonna get that customer service, unlike the Voigtlander, unlike the Zeiss Icon. So that's really reassuring. You've also got a really good camera mount. You've got a camera mount with lenses that have been made since the 1930s. So the lens selection for this camera is amazing. They exist at all price levels, all the way at the bottom from Russian Laka lens clones, all the way up to the top with the original Laka 50 millimeter .95, 10,000 dollar Noctilux. Lenses exist at all price levels and all qualities. Just an amazing lens selection. You can look at the top. You can look at the top of the camera and see there are hardly any controls. Everything on the camera just works so perfectly and it's so simple and so elegant. In my mind, this camera is the quintessential camera. And talking just a little bit about some of the quirks with how I decided on this particular camera, a couple of weeks ago, I found this camera from a Japanese seller and to my surprise, it was the titanium version. Um, it was on eBay listed for $26.69 and I thought that was a fair price. So I got to looking at the auction really closely to see there's something wrong with the camera, and there actually was something wrong with the camera. If you look at the top of the camera, there's a pretty significant scratch, and that's okay. It, it doesn't impact functioning at all. Um, the camera was actually CLA'd recently, so everything has been, already been brought up to code and is in great working condition. And everything else on the camera is perfectly mint. Everything looks great, except for that scratch on the top. So I saw the auction, and then I offered the seller 2200 bucks. So it was 2669 I offered 2200 And to my surprise, I woke up the next morning, and the gentleman had accepted. After that, I sent the payment via PayPal, and the camera was on its way. It arrived at my house three or four days later. So super easy transaction the camera is in really nice condition except for that little scratch on top and to save almost a thousand dollars on what these cameras are going for normally looking at the titanium version of the leica m6 in almost mint condition those are three thousand dollar cameras so i think i got a really good deal on it so very excited. So let's spend a little time talking about the lens that I've got paired with the camera as well, because I spent a quite a bit of time trying to decide what lens to go with as well. Um, this is the Voigtlander 35mm 1.2 
version three. So it's the latest and the greatest in the Voigtlander Nocton 35 millimeter series. Um, really cool lens, actually much smaller than I anticipated it to be as well, considering it's a 1.2 aperture lens. I looked at a lot of comparisons of this lens because Pretty early on, I came to the conclusion that I was going to use a 35-1.4, either a Sumilux or something from Voigtlander. I wanted to be at the 35mm focal length. So I saw some comparisons done between the 35-1.2 from Voigtlander and the 35 Sumilux from Laika. At least to my eye, the Voigtlander images looked a lot better. Getting the extra speed, the lower price, it didn't make a lot of sense to me to go with a Laika alternative, especially with it being two or $3,000 more money. So I ended up with the Voigtlander 35-1.2. Super cool lens and I cannot wait to get out and shoot it. I think this lens will serve me well. Um, it'll be a great all around lens. I've also got my eye on a couple of other Leica lenses, but we'll talk about those in another video. I cannot express to you guys how excited I am to have this camera and this lens combination and have this with me every day. Like I've pointed out in other videos, I'm an attorney and I take a briefcase with me to court every day. And lots of times I have a camera jammed down in my briefcase. This camera will likely go with me to court every day. It'll go in my backpack on my adventures. And I'm just so excited for the future that I have with this camera really cool camera represents the culmination of my photography journey and my film photography journey this camera has been kind of a, a halo camera for me so really excited to have it but if you think the Leica m6 titanium is cool chances are you're going to think the contacts g1 titanium camera is cool as well and unlike the Leica the titanium of the contacts it's actually a full titanium body and chassis so the camera is really light and actually very strong it's not just a nice patina like the Leica so check out my Contacts G1 review before you go. And if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate you taking this moment to subscribe to my channel. And it would honestly mean the world to me if you would come along on my film photography journey. But as always guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.